Hello, I am Agathis, and welcome back to our Let's Play of Sunless Sea. When we last left off, we were in Nuncio. That is the, the special place here where all the dead letters end up. Um, we are on a mission for Mr. Sachs. Our next stop is going to be up here at the Avid Horizon. And we need to do that pretty quickly. Uh, was there anything else to do here? I don't think so. We'd used up our something awaits us. So, uh, I think it's time to go. Mm. Yep, I think it's time to go. I don't think there's anything left for us here. So, on we go. Ooh, rat barge. Tasty pickings, potentially. Oh, come on. Nice. You've destroyed a rat barge. What will we do? We will loot and scuttle her. Um, we get a cache of curiosities and we get five supplies. That'll be handy. That'll be handy. Not as handy as fuel would have been, but eh, it's okay. A pneumatic rat sender. When did that? Where did that come from? Oh, we picked up the um, the post rat's niece or nephew, niece, I think. Okay, off we go. We're gonna head northeast a little bit. We'll stop in uh, in Carlisle's Haven on the way. We'll just take a little bit more of the black space out. Here comes the music. Swirly thing ahead. The Azaquoric Abyss. Any interesting new ports around here, Bat? No. I haven't used the Bat in ages until we really needed to use it to help find um, the Isle of Cats. I, I did eventually find the Isle of Cats using the sea bass, so it was well useful there. Uh, in Sunless Skies, uh, the new game which is coming out next year, it actually costs resources to use the sea bass. It costs um, supplies, basically, to use the sea bass, which, um, or the sky bass. It's a bass, it's a scout. Which I'm not that keen on, because one of the biggest challenges in this game has been just finding places. Especially as a new player. If you've played the game, you know, if you're on your 20th captain, you've played it lots of times before. Yeah, maybe it's not so difficult, you kind of know where stuff is. As a new player, you have no idea where anything is. So, Irem. We've been here before. The Pillared City. She will rise from the Z and the ice like dawn. She will be garlanded with red and decked with gold. The seven serpent will watch you longingly from its high pedestal. You will always arrive as a stranger, but when you leave, some part of you will always remain. We'll take our port report as usual. But there's nothing else here. We need... Um, Dark drop coffee beans or a lamentable relic. Um, you can buy a lamentable relic for a secret. Okay. 
We don't have anything really to sell. You can sell a captivating treasure for 50 fuel. That's pretty impressive. That is remarkably impressive, actually. Um, what on earth is this? You can buy Tales of Terror. We have been here before. I have seen this. I just haven't... I just don't remember, really, what's here. Uh, you can buy sea stories for two Tales of Terror. I've got loads of Tales of Terror. Haven't really figured out what to do with them yet, to be honest. I, I can buy some sea stories because we have we need sea stories for other stuff, I think. Cool. Alright, so that's all we need. Off we go. We will come back here again. Dark Drop Coffee Beans and Lamentable Relic. Make a note. Just round the corner. So, here we go. Last part of our journey to for Mr. Sachs. A little bit more to the northwest. Then we can start playing around with the um, the Submariner stuff. We can do this little quest line and go exploring underwater. Uh, once we've finally got this out the way. Plenty of supplies. Terror's a real problem, but we can... If we find some sea monsters, we can get rid of this quite quickly. Do we go between these? I think so. Yep. Yep. Here we go. The avid horizon. It's all twinkly. Finally, finally. There we go. Service at Avid Horizon. As soon as you dock, Mr. Sachs lumbers ashore. It has been preparing for this. Plunging a hand into its cloak, it removes a handful of ammonia-scented snow. It places it on the ground and adds another on the top. Into this one, it presses the teeth and the hair from the small box. Potential. Substance. Only one thing needs to be added, as in the tales of the Gnomon. The crimson beast of wa winter waits impatiently for you to provide it. Well, we either give it our blood, or we give it highly questionable blood. Well... We were given this specifically for this task, but I've played a pretty honest captain in this playthrough, so, um, ah, you know, what? what's the worst that can happen, right? I'll give it a few drops of blood. The essence of life. You nick your hand with a blade and hold it above the frozen mound. A drop wells up and falls. More follow. They fizz in the lacquer, which softens and melts into a puddle of snow. A puddle from which a hand emerges. Then a head. Then another hand, stretching as it clambers up from nowhere. The shape of a child, its skin glistening, white snow rippled with red. You reach out a hand. The child grips it with the chill of frostbite. Its legs finally form from the last of the lacquer, and it falls to its new knees, shivering and looking around in confusion. One of your zealers hurries over with a warm blanket. Another smacks his idiot head. Mr. Sachs stares down at the creature, which shivers and hugs itself. Again, says Sachs. Striding to the sealed gate, it rests a gloved hand against it, basking in the chill. 
The whisper of a place too cold for gods. Oh no. The whisper of a place too cold for gods. Refreshing. Dispose of the mongrel as you see fit. Your service is done. Be gone before I change my mind. Something new will shortly appear in your lodgings. Your service is concluded and Mr. Sachs has departed. We've lost our vial of highly questionable blood. There we go. Well, that was anticlimactic, I suppose. Uh, oh well, what can you do? Uh, so we uh, we have the snow child sitting here. Um, we'll we'll take our port report since we're here. Yeah, let's oppose the snow child. It cowers from the crimson beast. It's snow still settling. Oh, hello. It looks up at you, frightened and shivering for reasons that have nothing to do with cold. Your blood streaks through its ice. Uh, are you taking me home now? Ask the snow child about home. It remembers a life on the streets of London. Or leave it here. It is not our concern. I'm not leaving it here. London! London, yes! I wanted to play on the rooftops, but it made Mother cry. She cries a lot, but she says it's not my fault. She'll be worried. Wait! You're not a devil, are you? Mother says to look out for devils. It gives you a suspicious sniff. No, an eggy smell. You can take me back, right? I've always wanted to go zailing. The snow child looks up at you. It won't take up much room. It could do with a name, though. At least, until it remembers if it used to have one. Winter? Chion? Loki? Boreas? Snegori? Snegorocha? Elliot? Or Rose? Hmm. Um... Loki is the trickster god. Uh, Chion is, um, that's Greek, I think. Winter, obvious. Boreas, yeah. The, um, Aurora Borealis. Elliot. Rose. Elliot, a good name for any occasion. Elliot Preens. That's a great name! You reach out to take its cold hand in yours, leaving the Crimson Beast behind. And that's it. He's, uh... He's gone. There are no shops here. So we're going to have to find some fuel pretty darn fast. Um... Yeah. Okay, well, off we go. No, oops. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go straight to the Chapel of Lights and to Mark Palmerston for fuel. And hope that the terror level doesn't kill us on the way. Uh, there we go. Straight on course here for the Chapel of Lights. I don't think the Chapel of Lights has fuel, but it's so close that it's not going to make any real difference to us, I don't think. The Chapel of Lights. I don't remember this one. Is this the one where they do the feasting, they eat people? I think it is. The Chapel of Lights. Do you hear music? Yes, this is the one where uh, 
yeah, he's he's offering us um, the chance to dine on slightly suspicious food. Let's see. Attend a service at the chapel. The great bell toil tolls. The few and ragged faithful gather for St. Arthur's lesson. Bring your offerings. Oh, we have to... Ooh, it's going to cost us five supplies? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'll just take the port reports. I might be back one day when we've got some more supplies, but for now... Um, yeah, today is not it. Okay, let's go and get fuel. Mount Palmerston sells fuel dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. Straight east, tiny bit south. Oh, hello. That's what we want. That's what we want. Lifeberg, ahoy. Lifeberg is going to give us a nice... Um, nice fight. Maybe some fuel or supplies or something. It's seen us. That's fine. And... That's good. Come on, come on! There she goes. Wow, we burnt a lot of fuel there. Okay. Let's get out of here. Take the loot. Um, concentrate on gathering treasures. We've got supplies. We just want treasure. We take a hunting trophy and three outlandish artifacts. That's nice. Okay, off we go. Straight to Mount Palmerston. One and a half units of fuel left. Pray that we're going to be make going to make it. Light is out. Straight off we go. Terra seventy eight. It's going up pretty fast. I'm not happy. Here we go. Oh no, that's something else. <laughs> oh, that's the whirlpool. Duggan's Moor is a whirlpool. Oh no, don't... Oh no, that's fine. It looked like my speed went down for a moment. Yeah, snow slows us down, but Mount Palmerston is right here. Come on. Our fuel reserves are empty. And we're in. There we go. Mount Palmerston. Sullen, sullen lights glow green at the jetty's edge. Fuel! Fuel, fuel, fuel. Yum, 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 yum. There we go. Now, Zoop. Um, the guy in... Um, the Merchant Venturer wants Zoop, amongst other things. Actually, supplies aren't bad here either. The price of supplies isn't too bad. It's 22 as opposed to 20. Which is too high than London, but yeah, it's not bad. I have to remember this. Um, restless Nights. Oh, ignore them. Go up to the crater. This is where the woman lives. Perhaps it's time for a cup of honey fungus tea. Almost there. You look down and see Port Palmerston like a toy and the ruins like gravel. You've come far, 
but the volcano's cone still rears above you. Rest a little before you go the last half mile. We've met this lady before. And, um... She gives us some supplies and sends us on our way again. Uh, we... She was. She talks to us nice. She wants us to render her soul, or perhaps the souls of other people. We don't have any though. Um. So there's a quest for. There's a submarine quest here. Take note of a veiled woman. A middle-aged woman in a veiled hat is staring at you, waiting for you to notice and listen to her. Listen to her, sure. She begins commandingly, as though you had met in a salon in London, as though there were no burning mountain at her back, and as though you were socially just a little her inferior. Thank goodness, someone who might help me, she says. I have been searching everywhere. My brother is troubled, you see, troubled by some past difficulties. I came to Mount Palmerston because I had thought possibly they had his, well, his soul. She drops her voice to a whisper on the last words. But it isn't here. And now there's something else I must try. And you have a submarine. Sure, I do have a submarine. Receiving a commission from the Imperious Sister. The woman is no longer exactly youthful, but she speaks passionately from under her veil. Perhaps she has studied heroines on the stage. I need help to be reconciled with my dear brother. Sure, I'll listen to her. She is very urgent to speak with me. She has a brother who is dear to her, a sensitive soul, very reserved. He used to work for the Admiralty. Something happened to distress him there. When I worry about it, when I asked him about it, he said that I had enough to worry about with my own concerns. My husband was ill at the time. But I could help him if only he would permit me to know his troubles. For you know, he puts a hand on she puts a hand on her heart. Bearing one another's burdens is what makes us truly good. She tells you that she, you'll need to go to Aigul, the city of regrets. Find her brother's regret and return it to her. She will pay gladly. All right. Where is a ghoul then? I have no idea. I'll take our port report as usual. And that's all I have right now. Could dig amongst the ruins for supplies, but that's just luck really. Um, we might spend some of our money on Zoop. He wanted seven of those. They're quite expensive, but I presume we'll be compensated accordingly. Uh, if we have the hold space as well, which we do. Um, hmm. Where is Igul then? Well, it could be one of one of many underwater locations that we've seen that we haven't uh, actually been to so we'll have to go and explore those individually uh, that could we could make a start here and then try one of these we do need to go to poly 3 anyway for the cheerful for the um, the blind bruiser we have to pick up his his drugs <laughs> we have to pick up his souls um, so we'll have to do that anyway Maybe we'll do that in the next episode. Uh, what we could do is we could talk to the Clattery Air before we go. Oh, no, not on a sign. Duh. Officers, where is she? Come back. We can... Um, talk to her about her... A father or something? I'm not sure what this is. This is something about her father. Mr. Iron, truly, find her during an operation. Does the blood of London's cowled masters really run through her veins? 
twisted smile. You sit with her in a surgery lined with bottles of preserved and pickled body parts. I can't offer you proof, she says. The only strange tongue I speak is my mother's, which is ancient but human. Blades can cut me. I am not inhuman to fire, although perhaps the masters are not either. But I have not met anyone who shares my particular skills, and I know my mother. I cannot see her in any ordinary liaison with any ordinary man, much less a husband. She was in her third millennium when she bore me. So, we've learnt more about the Cladwy heir. We are now informed about her possible relationship to Mr. Iron, and we lost our la live specimen. So, we could um, tell her about her father. Increase, uh, explore her surgery? Sure, let's take a quick look. On her shelf, she keeps things preserved in alcohol or packed in oil. Things she cut from patients. Why do you have this tailbone? They are souvenirs, she says. Here's a patch of skin from the palm of a woman's hand. I took it from her in order to cure her of the urge to adultery. Now she wears gloves, but she's kept her marriage. There's more difficult work I could be doing. She is playing her blade between her fingers. Did you know my mother operated on the bazaar itself? She cut away its cladent lobe so, so that it would be at peace and not have to wander on and on. But the operation changed her. She got some of the ichor on her skin. The bazaar is alive? Hmm. That's something that keeps coming up. What happened to the Claydent Lobe? If the Clary Air's mother cut off a piece of London's Echo Bazaar, where did it go? Well, we let her operate on a postman, I think, and we got the Claddery Souvenir. Um, so, why don't we explore that next time? Thank you for joining me. If you've liked the video, please remember to like and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Let me do know down in the comments uh, what you think I should be doing next. Should I be returning to London or going out submarining? Or should I continue this quest? Let me know. And uh, catch, me, catch up with me on some of the other Let's Plays that are running at the moment. Anyway, I am Agathis. I am going offline. And I will see you next time.